today's lesson is on balancing chemical equations. You're going to notice a pretty big shift in difficulty because the last couple of days, as we've been finishing up the periodic table, you already had all the basic skills down. So it really was just like, and here's about this group, and here's about that group. Pretty, like, not terribly difficult stuff. Today we're going to be starting chemical reactions. This is going to be a much more fun portion of our chemistry class. It will also be a much more challenging portion of our chemistry class. Starting tomorrow, we are going to begin to see a lot more hands-on stuff and a lot more demos. Uh, in particular, if anyone wants to bring in a straw to class tomorrow, there will be things you'll be able to do with that. Any kind of straw. A straw that you can blow through, you need to be able to blow bubbles through. Metal straw. Metal straw's totally fine. But if you bring in a straw tomorrow, you will be able to use it. Yeah. Um, all right, so for this lesson with balancing chemical equations, a thing I want to make really clear about it is that it is not the kind of thing where there's like an algorithm or a simple process and you just learn that algorithm and then you execute on the algorithm and then you do it. We're not solving Rubik's cubes. We're not doing long division. There is no one process that will always work for this. Instead, what we're doing is we're really solving a puzzle. Every equation in front of us is gonna be a little bit of a puzzle. There's some core skills you'll need to have access to. You need to be able to you know, figure out how many atoms of each element are in this equation. But mostly, how you proceed, how you go about figuring this out, is really gonna vary from person to person, and that is okay. We're gonna have different processes for figuring it out. What we're gonna be doing is all about this like core fundamental law of chemistry, the law of conservation of mass. We talked about the law of conservation of mass way back when we talked about Marianne and Antoine Lavoisier in the lecture unit, right? We talked about you know this, this girl who ended up married to this chemist, and they became like the French power couple, one of our two French power couples, along with uh, the Curies. Um, but remember, they did this famous experiment where they burned something in a sealed container and they weighed it before they set it on fire, and they weighed it again after they set it on fire, and it was the same mass. And they said, matter is never created or destroyed, it only changes form. It's the law of conservation of mass. And all of the chemistry we'll do, we do will always follow this law. We also, in that History of the Atomic Theory unit, talked about John Dalton, the Quaker guy. He had a five-part chemistry, like, like a five-part theory of chemistry. And one of those parts was in chemical reactions. What we're doing is we're just rearranging atoms. That's what we're going to be talking about today, is how to think about not just individual chemicals, but chemical reactions. And starting tomorrow, we're going to learn about different types of chemical reactions. But first, we have to understand how to make sure that when we talk about chemical reactions, we're doing it in a way that obeys this law of conservation of mass. So we're going to have, I'm going to talk about a chemical reaction up here. Uh, let's imagine we have some sodium, sodium metal, and I want to set that sodium metal on fire. I'm going to burn it, which means reacting it with oxygen gas. And when I do this, I'm going to create, so first off, sodium metal, because it's a metal and it can do metallic bonds, it doesn't have to be part of a chemical compound to be stable. So I'm allowed to just write Na, and that's fine, it's stable. You can do that with metals. You can just have a metal sitting there by itself. Totally not a problem. Uh, the second reactant is oxygen gas. Y'all know that oxygen gas is O2. You drew this molecule yesterday. You know what oxygen gas looks like. Um, is the chemical formula for oxygen gas O3? No. Is it O7? No. Is it O17? No. no, it's O2. This is the chemical formula for oxygen gas. I'm not allowed to just change this subscript because I feel like it. Oxygen gas is oxygen gas. It's O2. And that's a really important rule for understanding balancing chemical equations is that the subscripts are what they are because that's what this chemical is. And I can't just arbitrarily pick a different number to go there. So let's first figure out, hey, if these two things were to react, if I were to have 
Sodium oxide, this is an ionic compound, with sodium as my cation, and, oxy and oxygen as my anion. My first question is, what would the chemical formula for that be? How would I figure out what the chemical formula is? Anyone think they have an answer? Let's break this down. Who can tell me what the charge of a sodium cation is? Nines? Okay, who can tell me about sodium? What's the charge of a sodium cation? Danny? Plus one. So a sodium cation is going to be plus one. All right, nine, what's the charge of an oxide anion? Uh, minus one. Take another look. It's in column 6A. Not minus one. Oh, minus two. Yeah, minus two. All right, but we know that we have to, in an ionic compound, have the same number of positive charges as negative charges. So what's the subscript here got to be on the sodium? You see? Two. Yeah. So the formula for sodium oxide is Na2O. This is the chemical formula for sodium oxide. I can't just pick a different number to be here, and I can't just pick a different number to be here. Sodium oxide is two sodiums for every one oxide. Is there anyone uncertain about why this has to be the chemical formula for sodium oxide? All right. So let's talk about the, does anyone see a problem? No. Thinking about that law of conservation of mass. Nyan, what do you see? Shouldn't there be four, or four sodium? Because there's two oxygens and oxygen. We got two oxygens, yeah. So, so there's something going on with the counts here, right? Like the number of oxygens is different. The number of sodiums is different on yeah. each side. So we have a problem. Balancing equations is about solving this problem. So first step to solving uh, an equation that you're trying to balance is to write down what the different elements you are and how many of each thing you've got. So what I like to do is underneath this arrow, oh, by the way, just some vocab to review real quick. On this side of the equation, the left side of the equation, we have what are called our reactants. Those are the things that are reacting with each other. And on the right-hand side of the arrow, we have our products. These are the things that are being produced. A good rule of thumb is the reactants react to produce